Welcome back folks, Brad here. Deb here. And today's video is gonna be a continuation of our water collection system and how we bring extra water to the pond to keep it full. Pond's really low right now. It's uh, beginning of December. It's actually gonna be 70 some degrees down here in Florida today, uh, unseasonably warm. Throughout the summer, as you saw in our pond video, which we'll put right here, our pond was very full. We had a lot of tropical storms and it was actually over full. We actually had to pump some water out, but we knew that wasn't gonna be the, the current state of our pond. Um, so we're always trying to look for ways to bring water into the pond. But uh, that's what this video is gonna be about today. Deb, you wanna give them a quick refresh on what our channel's about? Sure. We're in Northwest Florida and we live in Panama City, but we have bought 20 acres in the country and we're building this into our drink property and our dream in the making is what I like to call it. So we invite you to come along and watch us in our journey as we do our projects and we create our dream. All right, so that's exactly what we're doing here. We're taking this 20 acres, we're building it out. On the other side of the camera, there's a bunch of stuff going on right now, but uh, we're gonna focus today on this water collection system. So this will be part two of it. And then the third part is uh, from the day we were out here in July, it was 117 heat index, but uh, that one can't be posted until we finish this video. So I'm gonna hand the camera to Deb and uh, get this video going. Okay, as I mentioned, we're trying to collect as much rainwater as we can and shoot it down to the pond. If it keeps us in an overflow situation or condition, then we'll worry about that later with an overflow pipe or we'll pump it once in a while. But our biggest concern is keeping it full before we bother stocking it with fish because we don't want to stock it with fish and then the fish die or it's not aerated properly. So, um, Deb, if you want to show them what we got here, when we built the pole barn soon thereafter, I got up there and I painted the purland and then I had the the end purlin and then i had uh, a guy come in and put in gutters so we got gutters down this whole 60 foot length of this pole barn and then it comes down here into this green four inch sewage pipe now if you've watched the first video and you see the six inch pipe going down to the pond that's my main trunk line that's what takes the bulk of the water down to the pond and all of these four inch lines will feed into it so the last day of putting in that six inch pipe i went ahead and dug this 60 foot trench so you can see that the, the pole barn is elevated. It's up about four feet rather than the, the standard grade of the ground. I sloped this pipe through that extra dirt that's here and then connected it to a Y fitting that I'd already pre-placed on the six inch pipe. So I have the six inch pipe, it adapts down to a four inch pipe at the Y. And then the video that we're showing now is us putting this pipe in the trench and gluing it together. Now, after we had done that, and it was a fairly warm day that day, uh, we, we didn't want to jump on the shovel. So you're going to see uh, the box blade and the tractor took the tractor and the box blade and moved a lot of the dirt around that was here and put it in the trench. But we also found that uh, there wasn't enough dirt here on the slope. So when I had dug the six inch pipe down at the pond and I had rocked in where uh, the water goes into the pond, I had dug a basin there for the water to go in. So I had a bunch of extra red clay. And here you'll see me bringing that red clay from the pond, which is, I'd say it's 200 feet away. It's 200 feet of pipe. So let's call it about a 220, 230 foot drive. Um, back and forth, back and forth, you know, one bucket at a time. We put these buckets of dirt right here on this slope and then back bladed them down and, and got a lot of it back to it.
need some more dirt here, but uh, that's what we were able to do. So we covered the pipe with the box blade, packed it in, and then we brought some more dirt and recaptured our slope here. Okay, so that pipe that we just talked about comes from the pole barn to about here and it wise off and it catches the six inch pipe. I'm standing directly over the six inch pipe that goes 200 and some feet that way. So that four inch pipe comes into the six inch pipe and then the six inch pipe goes right into this basin. All right, so this basin is a 22 inch basin, I believe. I bought it from graydock.com. And what I do is I bring this gutter, which is on the west side of the pole barn. I bring this gutter, which is 48 feet of roof, uh, plus the lean. So it's, uh, it's a 32 foot wide building. So I got 16 foot of roof, plus I got 16 foot of lean. So I got 32 by 48 coming into this gutter, comes down and goes into this basin. And then at the bottom of this basin, the six inch pipe goes to the pond. The pipe that we talked about previously goes directly into the six inch pipe with a reducing Y. So then the next part of the system, we've got a four inch pipe that goes directly behind Deb and the camera. The four inch pipe that goes into that basin comes all the way along here. And uh, we hand dug all that because we didn't want to get the excavator too close to, well, actually, I'm not even sure we had the excavator, but we didn't want to get uh, a machinery this close to our poles. So that four inch pipe comes all the way through here. It's buried about a foot or so. And you can see by the pictures, it's not real deep, but it doesn't have to be deep because we're not looking at bringing a lot of heavy machinery this way into the pole barn. It'll mainly come from the end and go out the end here. We're actually going to um, put up some sheet metal here because when the sun sets in the west, we don't want that heat on our animals or that uh, sun fading on our equipment. But right about where my feet are, there is a T buried under the ground and it's a four inch T and it comes over and it catches this gutter. And this gutter, Deb, is going to shoot up just a short section of gutter. So because of the way we, would des we designed the pole barn, we have about, um, well, it's 12 feet to this pole. We have about 12 feet that's shorter than the rest. It doesn't have a lean. And that's because this is going to be a, a workshop here and we didn't want um, any restrictions of coming in and out of this workshop. So you see it's open space here. So we capture this water and we send it down to this pipe here, which is buried and catches the T into the four inch pipe that goes to the basin. So that catches everything we've explained so far in this video captures all the water that we can off of this uh, pole barn roof. So the, again, the pole barn is 32 wide by 60 long and then it has a lean that's 48 long by 16 wide. I'm not gonna do the square footage, no math while standing on this channel, so Deb will throw up the square footage of that right here above my head. So then the last leg of this water collection system, well, the last part of this part two of it, because the last leg will be uh, catching the water off the side of the shed, our shed is about 2,400 square foot, and we catch water in two different ways in the shed. Uh, on one side, we catch it with a gutter, but uh, that's not what we did on this side. On this side, we wanted something that looked a little better, more aesthetically pleasing, and also would help um, lock in all the fill dirt that we had to use to build the shed pad. Uh, everything here is, is a slope, a uh, three to five degree slope. So you got something that's, you know, 40, 50 foot wide. You got three to four feet of dirt on one side, like you saw on the side of the pole barn. It's also what we have on the side of our shed. And uh, that, that's what Deb calls my mega shed. So you can look here and check out that video of the building of the mega shed. But we also want to capture the water from the mega shed. So one side is going to go into this pipe. So this four inch pipe goes from that basin all the way under here. And then as this dirt builds up into the pole barn, that pipe's pretty deep right here. It took me, I would say, a whole day to dig about where Deb is standing with the camera to about where I'm standing. I mean, it was uh, it was waist deep or so. This is really, really hard packed clay from digging the pond. So then that pipe comes all the way up here. <laughs> Deb's right. walking and backing up and it's a recipe for disaster. Okay, so that pipe comes here to this basin. And we'll show pictures now of how we dug this basin out. We dug it by hand, we ran a string line, and we have slope. And this pipe is actually four inch pipe with holes in it. 
Now, I'm not sure if I was supposed to put the holes up or down. I put them up and then we put a silk cloth over top of them, but maybe we should have put them down. But either way, we um, dug this out. It's about two foot wide. We put railroad ties. Um, I tried to pick out select railroad ties from the lumber company and we put railroad ties here and these railroad ties are, are fairly level. I got them as level as I could. I uh, did it all by hand. We did not have the excavator at the time. So all that work was done with the, the forks of the tractor and then manual. We dug it out by hand. We placed the um, railroad ties by hand. We cut them with a chainsaw to make them fit on the end here for the basin. And uh, like I said, we continued this four inch sewage pipe with the holes in it all the way down the side of the shed. Now I had three basins here, but um, I took the end one out. I ended up not really liking the way that turned out. So I actually have the pipe buried under the stone here. And uh, I just put silk cloth above that. What I wanna do is go back and clear that hole out and put in some like rat wire uh, to keep the rocks out but let more water come in on the end because I, I don't think it's getting into the pipe as quick as I want it to. But we did this on this side rather than putting a gutter because number one, we weren't sure if we could put a gutter on the side of a Carolina carport. So they don't offer that as an option. And my guy that put up my gutters did, wasn't sure if he could do it. Um, and also a lot of dirt splashed up onto the shed and made it real dirty. It needs to be pressure washed. And I didn't want a gutter there, but then still have wind driven rain hit the dirt against the side of the shed and then get the shed all muddy. Um, and also I wanted to solidify this bank like we talked about earlier. We'll, we'll capture the slope of this bank, but it's, it's, pretty, it's pretty steep. It's a, a good four foot grade or so, or four foot above grade. And uh, I wanted to want something that looked good, something that would stabilize the slope and also something that would keep the side of my shed clean. So the very last step of this um, second part of our water collection system, we wanted some sort of porous rock to put in here. And oddly enough, you know, it was, uh, we're in the second year of COVID, it was hard to get river rock. And I actually had to wait and I had to order in. In the Panama City area, it's easier to get rock than it is up here in the I-10 area. And then in the I-10 area, they got to bring it in from, you know, miles away with a truck and it's expensive with gas. So anyway, uh, there was a shortage of rock. We waited, I think, a couple, three months for rock. Finally, we got a uh, dump truck full of rock delivered. And uh, you'll see in the videos here, that was the first time Deb had ever used a tractor to actually scoop rock. So you'll see her going into the pile, kind of going in slow, being cautious. But she gets a good scoop of rock and she brings it around the front of the shed and uh, she actually dumps it down there and then I was spreading it with a rake. So she brought uh, several loads of rock and then uh, she wanted she wanted the job to be done. So she told me to jump on the tractor and uh, I'm a little bit quicker with the tractor. I've been doing, I've been tractoring since I was probably six, six years old, but definitely since I've been eight years old. So uh, I'm, not, I'm not scared to push it a little bit. So this is the final product. This, uh, all the water goes into this rock, this river rock. It filters its way into the pipe, goes into these two basins here, and it eventually makes its way down to the pond. And since the whole shed is 55 foot long and the whole pole barn is 60 foot long, you're looking at uh, 150, 160 feet until you get to the basin and then 200 more feet after the basin. So we're pushing 400 feet that uh, where this water starts at the very back of the shed, we're pushing 400 feet before it gets to the pond. But all that's essential. We need every drop we can get. Uh, we, we've done the math and we figure every inch of rain, if we capture every bit of water that comes off this roof, and you're never gonna be 100% efficient with your, um, with your gutters or with this river rock system, with a French drain, let's call it. But uh, if, we're 100, if, we, if we were to achieve 100% efficiency, we will be looking at 3,000 gallons for every inch of rain that would go into the pond. We need that and we're, we're all doing all this because one, we need to do water management on our building. Again, we're, we're building on slopes here. So we gotta do something with the water, whether we let it go naturally down there and create a swamp on the neighbor, neighbor's property, or if we take it and channel it to the pond, we gotta do something with it to manage the water around these buildings. Because buildings are impervious. They don't, you know, the concrete doesn't allow water to soak in. And so whenever you build something, you gotta have water management. And we're trying to do the best we can to collect this water and make something useful out of it by putting it in the pond. Alrighty, so that is a synopsis of what we did. And these few videos that capture this show it in a very condensed um, fashion, but it actually was weeks, months in the making. 
Um, it's a huge, huge project, but it's been so effective. The water that's being funneled into the pond as a result of this is just phenomenal. I knew when he started talking about it, there's gonna be a big project. I knew it would be successful, but it wasn't until it was done and complete and we actually saw it in motion to see how successful, how successful it was, so. Good job, babe. Good job. Yeah, there. I mean, there's multiple part moving parts here. We had to uh, we had to get the railroad ties. We had to get the river rock on order. We had a you know multiple trip to Lowe's. You'll see that in the in the first video with the stacks of pipe that we had, and not just the six inch pipe going to the pond, but all the four inch pipe that we had to use. We put the silk cloth underneath the river rock. So there was just multiple steps, and uh, and the planning. So it, it was a big job. And like I said, this is step two. There's still one more step coming up. And that actually will be the first video we film specifically for YouTube, or, or at least with YouTube in mind, as opposed to uh, just capturing what we did out here for four years and then just trying to tell our story. So. I guess it's, it's a moment we've been leading up to where we stop uh, standing in front of you and, and on a tripod and, and talking and then showing a bunch of pictures and actually show us, you know, physically doing work while, while the camera's rolling. So we're pretty excited about the, about transitioning to that. So if you liked this, we ask that you give us a thumbs up and a like and subscribe if you haven't already. And we hope you follow us on our journey. Take care. All right, we'll catch you on the next one, guys. Bye-bye. <laughs> you better edit that out. <laughs>